Hi everyone, Kendall here with Lousy Llama Creations. Today, we're gonna to be making a crocheted snake. This is a beginner friendly pattern, although in the video I'm making a smaller sample. It's very beginner friendly. I'm gonna walk you through basically how to crochet, how to learn, all of that. If you are seeing this from one of my crochet kits, thank you, it means a lot to me. If you're like, what is that? Link below, you can get all the supplies you need and the pattern all in one for um, to learn how to crochet and crochet is a cool little snake. I do also have the pattern just listed down below for those who just need the pattern and don't need all the supplies. Speaking of supplies, you're gonna need medium weight for yarn. I'm using Premier Basics. I have it in this bright green, this blue, and then this pink for the tongue. 10 millimeter safety eyes, stuffing, and a five millimeter crochet hook, tapestry needles, stitch markers, scissors, the usual. If you got a crochet kit, it's all there, you just need to grab scissors. All right, let's jump in and start making. Okay, to start off our snake, we're gonna do something called a magic ring, magic circle, any sort of starter circle for crochet. I'm gonna be holding my hook and I have my yarn. There's a couple different grips you can do for a crochet hook. Some people do the pencil, some people do a knife or variations. I do the knife, I think it's more comfortable. You hold it just like you would a knife. For my yarn, I'm gonna pull out some so I can work with it. This is our tail, you know, the end it's where it's cut, nothing can go over here. I'm gonna wrap it around my hand to make an X. And I'm gonna hold it in the middle with my thumb. Taking my hook, I'm gonna go under, then over, and scoop it through. And I'm kind of twisting my hook up. I'm gonna pull it off my hand, and this is the string that's attached to the ball of yarn. So I wanna pull that. And then move it to the end of my hook and do something called a chain, which is bringing our yarn on top of our hook and through our loop. So it kinda of keeps this whole thing in place. But let me show that again. These can be really tricky, so I wanna show you an alternative as well. I have my tail wrapped to make an X and hold in the middle. Under, over, pull through. And I twist my hook up to get off my hand and tighten. Then our chain, we pull, put the yarn on top of the hook. It's called a yarn over and then pull through. We're then gonna place six single crochets on this. A single crochet is the smallest smallest stitch and it's like the most basic um, stitch we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna place my hook on the inside of the circle. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more. This is what I'm gonna call my working yarn, the yarn attached to the ball. I'm gonna do that yarn over, placing the yarn on top of the hook and pulling through so that I now have two loops on my hook. Yarn over again and pull through. That's one single crochet. Again, putting my hook in my circle, tightening it a little bit. Yarn over and pulling through. yarning over and pulling through both loops again. I'm gonna repeat this so I have six of the stitches. This is three, four, five, and six. Then you get to pinch the top right by the hook and pull our tail so that you get a circle. And this will be our round one. Now, a lot of people struggle with the magic ring, so let's talk about an alternative if it's getting you all tangled. Taking everything out. We're gonna do a slip knot. So I have my tail 
twisting and pulling through just like a normal knot. If you've done any sort of slip knots before, it is exactly the same. I'm twisting and pulling through, putting my hook on and tightening. And we're gonna do two chains. So yarning over and pull through, yarning over, pull through. We're then gonna place our six single crochets into that very first chain that we made. So I'm gonna insert my hook, make one single crochet, and then five more by putting my hook into the same hole, to the same chain. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. However you start, doesn't matter. I'm gonna place my stitch marker into the last stitch that I made. This is a stitch, it has like that V. That's gonna be one stitch. You should be able to count six. We're gonna be working in a spiral all the way around. So for round two, it says we need to do six increases. I'm gonna place my hook into the next stitch by going under both of those loops. So again, I'm continuing around in the same direction. So I'm gonna insert my hook, make one single crochet, and make a second into that same hole, that same stitch. And this is called an increase. And then I'm gonna to go to the next stitch and do the same thing. So place two single crochets in it. One, two, and then into the next. At the end of round one, we had six single crochets. At the end of round two, we'll have 12 because you're placing two into every stitch. Marking my way around. Okay. This is our last one. I like to take out my stitch marker so I have some room to work. And place our two single crochets. And then we gotta put our stitch marker back. For round three, we're going to single crochet 12. So we're not gonna do increases, we're not gonna double anything. We're gonna place one single crochet in every stitch. So one into the next, and then into the next, and you're gonna do this all the way around. It's starting to kind of go up, which is perfect. I'm gonna push mine so this tail was what we started with. You're gonna want that on the inside of your snake. Oof, I am all tangled. There we go. Give myself some more yarn to work with. Our next round, we're gonna do one single crochet and then an increase. So on the next stitch, we're gonna do one single crochet. And then into the next one, we'll do our increase which is those two. So one and then a second. And we're gonna repeat that sequence around. So one and then a double. And we'll do this all the way around. For the next three rounds, we're gonna place one single crochet in every stitch. So just do one and one Finish the round, move the stitch marker up, and go around three times. You can start seeing the head start to form. Our next round, we're gonna do a single crochet and then a decrease. 
So we know how to do the single crochet. But now we're going to do a decrease, which is the opposite of an increase. So we're going to combine two stitches together. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over it, pull up a loop, and then into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, so you have three. Yarn over, pull through all three. Don't forget to turn your hook down when you're pulling through so that it doesn't get stuck. So again, one single crochet, and then a decrease. Insert, pull through, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Repeat this for the whole round. Now we get to put the eyes on, which is pretty fun. So I want to pull my loop just so I have some wiggle room so it's not going to fall apart, basically. Taking out my hook just so I can work. Grabbing my safety eyes. This is the bottom, but it mm, doesn't really matter, but technically the end of the round would be the bottom. I'm going to place my eyes in. I'm going to do in rounds five through six. So one, two, three, four, five. So in between rounds five and six. And then place the other one about eight stitches apart, but you can decide what you like. <laughs> Once you're happy with the placement, you can place the backs on. You put it on and then you push till you hear or feel the click. I want to make sure it's nice and secured. There we go. Now I'm going to put my hook back in my loop and then tighten it again. If that tail in the middle is in your way, you can shove it in or trim it. For the next 37 rounds or so, you can just use the rest of the yarn you have if you're using a kit, or obviously you can make it as long as you want if you have your own yarn. We're just going to be placing one single crochet in every single stitch. I'm taking my stitch marker and I'm moving it to the side of my stitch, just like that. So then when I move around, I don't have to move my stitch marker because I'll be able to see the end of the rows. So you're just going to add all of your rounds so it's nice and long and finally will look like a snake. Here's the trick, okay? You're gonna start stuffing now. Do not wait till the end to stuff this. I assure you, it doesn't work. It gets clumpy. I, I tried it, okay? You're like, no, I'll like stick it in with the, my hook or like a spoon. No, it doesn't work. You need to, to stuff it as you go. So I'm pulling apart my stuffing into small clumps. I'm gonna do the head, making sure it's exactly how I like it. The trick is definitely small clumps. Cute. So then you will crochet a few rounds, add more stuffing, crochet a few rounds, add more stuffing. I, I promise you it does not work if you wait till the end. So I'm going to be making a mini sample, so I'm going to have a few more rows and then I'll show you how to close the bottom. I'm making my tiny sample so he looks ridiculous right now. I'm going to add a little bit more stuffing right at the end. Again, trying not to overstuff. I want to move my stitch marker up. And we're going to do the last round, which is six decreases. So again, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, just like that. You're going to just go back to back all the way around. All right, now I'm going to cut a tail. So I'm going to cut my yarn. Obviously, I left like a foot of yarn, which is a lot, but you just need some. And then I'm going to pull my hook so that comes off. I'm going to place this tail on my tapestry needle. And we're going to close the bottom. We're going to do that by going in and out of the stitches. So I'm going in and then out. 
and pulling, and then again, in and out, and then pull, and then once more, because we have about six stitches, right? And then you're gonna pull tight. I like to place a knot at the end of mine. So that my knot's right at the base. And then you're gonna shove your needle in and poke out. Pulling it a little bit just so it's a little flatter. Just like that. And you're gonna cut as close to the base as you can. You can like shove it in if you need to or rub it. And that's how you close the bottom. To make our tongue, we're gonna do that slip knot again. I'm placing my hook on. And we're gonna chain 11. So yarn over, pull through 11 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now we're gonna do a row of slip stitches all the way back. Now, technically it does matter where you insert your hook. Like if it's in this loop or that loop or the back or through both, hey, but we're beginners here. So I'm, I'm gonna tell you it doesn't actually matter because it, it really doesn't. What does matter is that we're going to skip our last chain we just made, the 11th. And we're gonna insert our hook into the one after. And we're gonna do a slip stitch, which is yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. And you're gonna repeat this all the way down. So we get this weird little tongue I'm gonna leave a tail and cut it and then fasten off again, pulling through. To sew it on, I'm gonna put my tail back on my needle. Let's decide, this one's the front, back, yeah. This is where his eyes are. We're gonna sew it here. So I'm poking it through. Mm, I think I want it like underneath right here. Poked it through the green, so then you'll poke it through the pink. It doesn't really matter how you sew it on, as long as it's sewn and it stays. <laughs> I'm twisting mine a little bit so I can line it up so it's nice and straight. Not that it particularly matters, I guess, because it's a tongue, but I don't know. If it matters to you. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm then gonna take my needle and poke it into the green as close to the pink as I could and poke out the bottom. Whoa, and maybe don't get it looped around your tongue. And pulling. And the other tail, there we go. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other tail. poking it near the pink, and I wanna to try to get it into the same stitch as the other one, the other tail. I'm then gonna trim. I'm gonna leave a little bit here so it doesn't come undone. Then I'm gonna take my scissors, or your hook, or your needle, or whatever, and stick it back in. Ah. There we go. Now you can't see it. And now he has a tongue. For our embroidery, I cut a nice long piece of whatever your stripe color is, putting it on my needle. Starting from the back, I'm poking through and I'm gonna poke it out on the top. And I'm gonna pull, see how long, oh, that's plenty long. 
You want to leave a few inches in the back so that it doesn't come undone on you. We're then going to make a straight line and then go down. And then we're going to poke it one row either in front or in the back, depending on what direction you want the scales to go. So then I'll pull and I'm going to scoop my straight line into the pink. And I'll poke it again. Don't worry, I'll, I'll show this again. So you're basically making a straight line and doing another stitch to make a V shape. So I'm going to make another straight line and then go down one row. Try to do that in the middle, mine's a little off. I'm scooping the pink into the same, and then I'll poke out somewhere else. And then pull. And then on the one you see in all the pictures, I did pink, the same pink as the tongue, and then blue, and I went back and forth alternating. When you're finished, you're gonna stick it on the back, Taking this off. Again, you want to leave a little bit to make sure it doesn't come undone. And again, you'll poke it in. And that's how we're going to make our snake. Thank you so much for following my video tutorial. I hope you had a great time making this snake or a little tiny baby snake. But I like the snake better. If you have any questions, please reach out so I can help. I would hate for you to get stuck. If you did enjoy this tutorial, if you could please give this video a like, comment, subscribe. It really helps grow the channel and I can continue to make more content for you guys because I love crochet tutorials and I love sharing it with everyone. Thank you so much. And again, my name is Kendall here with Lousy Lama Creations. I'll see you in the next video.